if you wish to understand and influence our privacy and security, you need to keep track of several things. Some of the most significant are how privacy has been defined and limited, how current technology enables mass surveillance, the recent expansion of the third party doctrine, and the consequences of the current encryption policy debate. In the past, privacy was defined and limited by a combination of practicality and expectation. In 1776, private correspondence existed because everybody assumed it should be private and because it was impractical to collect, maintain, and utilize detailed records of everybody's correspondence. In the 200 years following 1776, our expectations of privacy evolved as technology slowly changed the ground rules. But <laughs> nothing in the past has prepared us for the wild changes of the last 40 years. Today, it's both practical and profitable to track every aspect of our modern life. Modern technology has overcome almost all limits on surveillance. Monitoring people is cheap and profitable. Multiple groups benefit from tracking every aspect of our spending, our physical travel, and our internet use. Modern privacy is a starving orphan. It has been abandoned by practicality, economics, and expectation. During the last couple of decades, we placed privacy under the supervision of the third party doctrine. This is a legal theory that an individual can only create privacy by controlling information. If information is held by a third party, then the individual can't control it and he can't expect privacy. The third party doctrine doesn't care if information is sensitive or revealing. Once info is in the hands of a third party, then the individual has no claims. This has caused us to lose almost all privacy protections on shared information. Our society requires constant interaction with third parties. If we can't expect privacy from them, then we have no privacy. The Carpenter versus U.S. case documents the extent of our privacy laws. In this recent U.S. Supreme Court case, a man was sent to jail because his cell phone tracking said he was at the scene of a crime. His lawyers appealed the warrantless use of this tracking information. In Carpenter, the U.S. Supreme Court decided that we had created a significant threat to privacy and liberty. The justices seemed appalled at the extent of the tracking information. They decided that the third party doctrine should be overruled. Government must get a warrant before accessing cell phone tracking information. But they stopped short of addressing the underlying issues. If you have an interest, you should read the Friends of the Court briefs in Carpenter. They describe in great detail the tracking capabilities of modern cell phones. For example, there appear to be no difficulty in determining who has what phone. Everybody who carries a cell phone creates a fairly accurate record of their movement and activities. Our cell phone tracking records get widely accessed. They get resold. They easily pass from one jurisdiction to another. Our tracking records will probably never disappear. This is depressing. <laughs> but on the other hand, it's nice that the U.S. Supreme Court still feels that law enforcement should have limits and controls. 
lately the highest representatives of law enforcement are asking for power to dictate when and how an individual controls their own information. This is the core of the current encryption policy debate. It is more than just backdooring all the phones. Law enforcement is proposing that individuals must not be allowed to control their own information at all. Innocent citizens must not be allowed to control the expression of their information and we must not be allowed to control who we communicate with. If law enforcement is successful in eliminating individual control over information, then both privacy and self-control are obsolete. This would also eliminate any ability to provide integrity and auditability on the internet it would eliminate our ability to secure and control our own devices. It will also rewrite major portions of the U.S. Constitution. <laughs> My personal opinion is that we need new definitions and protections for privacy. Somehow we need to protect information that enables manipulation. We also need to limit the use of that information to control us. We should all work to create meaningful protections for privacy. Once privacy is gone, we also lose security and liberty.